And like what Disney would have you believe, anemone fish like Marlin and Nemo are social creatures and share their habitat and even their anemone with other clownfish. Clownfish refers to a genera of fish called amphiprion, of which there are over 30 known species. Each amphiprion species has its own society, built upon a size hierarchy, in which the dominant female and the assigned subdominant male are the only sexually mature couple and the largest amongst the colony. Since Finding Nemo came out 18 years ago, it has become a pretty known fact that, upon the death of the dominant female clownfish, the subdominant male will undergo sex change to ascend as a dominant female, and the largest immature male will become sexually mature to form the breeding pair. The sex plasticity of anemone fish is still an active field of research, requiring the clarification of the proper mechanisms and, more interestingly, what role epigenetics play in its activation. However, there are other aspects of clownfish to be studied. Namely, and for this video, I'm less interested in the interior affairs of one single species, but rather on how different clownfish within one single habitat interact. And for that, we turn our attention to these, the famous three white stripes. Amphibrion species exhibit a particularly simple stripe pattern. Zero, one, two, or three stripes against a yellow to red, brown, or black body. The stripes are vertical and consistently appear at the end of the head, the middle of the torso, and the start of the tail. These stripes are believed to play a role in species recognition. Because different clownfish species can be found within one habitat, often co-inhabiting the same sea anemone host, recognizing fish within the same social group becomes essential to mediate agonistic interactions and aggressive behavior. Chromatophores are pigmented cells that give fish their color. There are four main types of pigment cells. Xanthophores are orange. Leucophores are white, melanophores are black, and iridophores are white and iridescent. Iridescent is basically a funny way of saying that they change color depending on which angle you're looking at them from, like soap bubbles. In amphiprion species, white stripes are made from a mix of melanophores and iridophores, while black ones are more dense in melanophores. During the larval development of stripes, melanophores, which exist dispersed around the fish's body, are pushed out of the way by iridophores as these form the white stripes. As melanophores are pushed, they accumulate, forming regions at the edge of the white stripes that are really dense in melanophores and thus create a black outline to the white. It's through the different expressions of these characteristics that we observe such stripe diversity amongst amphibrion species, the very key to maintaining peace in the anemone. Diversity of stripes has been achieved through evolution from one common ancestor of all amphibrion. According to stochastic mapping of stripes, there is a high likelihood that the common ancestor had all three stripes, head, trunk and caudal. Over the generations, amphiprion species show a tendency to lose them. The first stripe to be lost will always be the caudal one, followed by the trunk and finally the head. In some branches, it's observed that reversion is possible and that some species whose ancestors had two or one stripes have gained another one. During the embryonic development, stripes appear sequentially from head to tail, with the head and trunk stripes often appearing simultaneously. In 9 out of 26 amphibrion species studied, extra stripes appear during the juvenile period, only to be lost in adulthood. This is exemplified by the amphiprion frenatus. Adult frenatus are characterized by having a single vertical stripe across the head. However, during larval state, a second and even third stripe may appear at around the same time it would be expected for them to show in species with three stripes. Several months later, these stripes will be lost, and in adulthood, Fernandes will only show the characteristic single stripe. The 
these nine amphibian species, all sharing a common ancestor but standing within very distinct evolutionary branches, stand as a clear example of ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. While the general mechanism through which the amphiprion achieves stripe diversity exists as a convergent evolution towards the loss of stripes. There also appears to be a correlation between the number of stripes and the shape of the anterior lobe dorsal fin, both the band and the indentation working in tandem to disguise the fish's silhouette by creating a disruptive pattern against the anemone backdrop that confuses predators. This correlation suggests an evolutionary advantage to the existence of stripes, and yet they are being lost over the generations, which suggests there is a developmental barrier that outweighs the selective factors. The study of anemone fish as an evil devil model is still a recent field that presents a number of questions just begging to be answered. For example, the pattern distribution of stripes in amphibrion discussed throughout this video clashes with the Turing model of pattern appearance, which is observed on other well-known species to anyone working in biology, like the zebrafish, and instead opens up the possibility of distinct mechanisms yet to be explored. As for the fish themselves? Evolution has and will likely continue to shape the way that different species interact and for as long as they can tell friend from foe, there might be peace in the anemone. I can feel it and, and I, I look at you and I, I'm home.